Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to smoke a brisket. As from the other video, we trimmed the brisket. So now we're ready to put it on. Just as a recap, we, we trimmed it. Uh, we put a slather on it, put a mustard slather. We put our Bobby's barbecue rub. And then we have another secret ingredient we do to it, right? Right before we put it on, we put a little pepper on top and on the side, it helps form that bark. And when we put it on the smoker, we start at 250 for the first two hours. Then we go up to 275 and do that for about three to four hours based on how the brisket looking, how the bark is going. And right before we wrap it, we bump it at about 285 to 300 based on the temperature outside and how the brisket going. What that does, it helps melt down that fat, that fat renders, it gets like a marshmallow on top, and then we wrap it. And then once we wrap it, hopefully for the next couple hours, two, two and a half hours, then we should be pulling it. But you only want that paper on there when we wrap it for like the last third of the cook. Because if you put it on too early, it'll steam off the bark. The bark, you have like patches on your bark. So that's how we do it by that. Follow me to the smoker. We put the point towards the firebox. That's the point, that's the flat. Since it's the only bricks we got on, we put it in the middle. We go like that. So as you can see, we got the point towards the firebox. That's our flat. That smoker come around and hit it. We want it to open this for about the next two hours or so. It'd be about, we'll check it, make sure our, our flat is not curling any. We try to, that's why we don't go so high in the beginning because we don't want to start curling up. We have to put foil and stuff on it. But we won't check it for the first two hours before we even think about spritzing it. So we see your bad butt in two hours. <laughs> We're about three hours in this brisket cook, and we're going to spritz it with some Worcestershire. This is our very first spritz, so it's going to go a little bit heavy. And after then, we spritz it like every hour. But you want to make sure, like today it's cold outside, so we're going to probably spritz it every hour. But if it's a real hot, humid day and the meat is sweating when it looks like it's wet, don't over spritz it because what'll happen, you can steam your bark off. See right here, this Worcestershire, when it's like kind of like paint, and you don't want to spritz it too hard because like you'll make the season come off. So you kind of want between a stream and a mist. But you see how I'm spritzing it? You can start seeing it look a little wet on there. That's exactly how you want it. And then you go around and hit the front of it right here, the parts you can't see, and hit this part right here. We get it like that. Now you won't do as much as the next time around. You can open up that nozzle a little bit, let it fan out a little bit more. And after then, you wait about another hour before you spritz it. But you only spritz the parts that look dry. That little hump right there, that probably get a little hard at first. So we'll keep an eye on that, but we're doing good. There's nothing curling up on it. I'm going to put a little foil right there on it just because it's curling up a little bit right there on that side. But it's nothing major. So I'm gonna take a piece, I'm taking a piece of foil. You got a shiny side and a dull side. You always put the shiny side on the meat. Go up on there like that right there. Just tuck it like that right there. And what that does is keep that corner for curling up so it don't dry out. You can save that brisket. All right, we'll see you in about an hour. Hey guys, we're about six hours into our brisket cook. Remember, we went two hours at 250, four hours at 275, and we're gonna bump it for 300 about an hour and a half to two hours when that top gets soft like a marshmallow, and I'll show you that. But one thing I want you to keep in mind, if you're cooking on a smaller smoker, your times and temperatures can vary a little bit. If it's like a real small smoker, like a pellet or like a Weber kettle, I'll probably keep between 250 for like three hours and bump 275 and just roll it out right there. Even some of your pellet smokers because they can cook a whole lot hotter and I don't want you to bring your meat up. We're cooking on thousand gallon smokers as you can see here. These things are pretty huge. You can put anywhere from 24 to 26 briskets to about 40 pork butts. So let's take a look inside now. As you can see this brisket right here is looking good. Looking real good. We done spritzed it twice since the last time you saw it. Um, like I said, every hour to every 45 minutes, something like that. And if it's sweating, I'd rather spritz it at all. But we're gonna spritz it like right in here and right in here. This part sticking up do get a little hard, but right now it's still good. But when I set my bump to 300, to about an hour, for an hour and a half to two hours, we want this top with that fat cap it to get like a marshmallow. It get real soft. And right now, it's still kind of stiff. If somebody increase the heat or make that fat, it's like, boom. It'll make that fat get real soft and render out. And that's what you want. It'll break through the meat, through the fibers of the meat. 
But it's still looking pretty good, I must say. And that's that piece of foil we put on earlier to keep that side from curling up. Um, but it's holding up pretty good. I might can even take it off. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and spritz it with some more wishes shoe. Now, take a look at it as I do it. You see how that helps? Just help form that beautiful bar. And I'm going to hit that little high piece right there, hit that front. And anytime you got any puddling right there, you just tip it over because you don't want that bark, to, that bark to get discolored. We put a lot of time on that whole bark right there. So let me put another piece of foil on that right quick. Like I always say, shiny side towards the meat. Let that go for about another hour. We're checking in about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and go for that, we bump to 300. So we have a little over eight hours in our brisket cook. We're gonna check it. It's about time to wrap, but I'm just gonna double check it. Now one thing I want you to know, right before you wrap a brisket, the last hour or 45 minutes of the cook before you wrap, you don't spritz it. Cause the reason why, we're gonna spritz it when we wrap it in butcher paper, and we don't want that bark to steam off. So just looking at it now, we touching it. That bar looking good, it's setting. This side over here is real soft. I kind of want this to run down a little bit more. It's getting there. This right here is not gonna run down much more on the top because it wasn't that thick to start, but it's a great trim. But we just want to run that a little bit more because when you cut into it, if you if you don't render it out, it had that little gummy off-white look that you don't want. It's not the end of the world, it happens, even at the restaurant sometimes, but if we spend this much time into it, we don't want to do that. So I just want you to see what we got going on. I'm going to lift it up, put, drink some of that puddle drip off. But you see how good that bark looks? So we're going to go by another 30 minutes or so, no more than 45 minutes, then we're going to wrap this bad boy. So just remember, on the last 30 to 45 minutes, no more than an hour before you wrap it, you don't spritz it. But it's feeling real good. Right, I'm just checking for any hard, crunchy spots. But it's looking really good right now. All right, guys, this is a lot of people been waiting on. We've been nine hours into the cook on the brisket. Um, that bark is set. Usually it sits between eight to nine hours. Usually eight on average, but went a little bit longer. What you want is have that soft marshmallow feel. You can see it. You can see a little jiggle in it when we're setting it down like that. Um, some a little bit more, some a little bit less, but look at this thing. You've been with me the whole entire time. The, like I told you, that last hour to 45 minutes, you do not spritz it. Because what happened, I'm going to spritz it now with apple cider vinegar for the first time when I get ready to wrap it. So what I'm going to do now is just spritz my paper. We do an overlap. Right now we're using 24 inch butcher paper. That's what we can get our hands on. Typically we have an 18 inch butcher paper. And make sure you get butcher paper, not that uh, freezer paper, because that freezer paper has a wax coating on it, which you don't want because that'll make it hard on the bottom, that wax coating to come off. So we put that apple cider vinegar on the paper so it can be pliable when we wrap it. Also, what we're going to do now, we're going to spritz the brisket. You don't want to get too hot, close to it, like a stream and knock your bark off, crack your bark. You just want to get it good and wet like that. That thing glistening like a glazed donut. <laughs> Look at that thing. So now what I like to do, I like to kind of get a hand width on both sides. This is a little wider on this side, so, but that's okay. I can just pick this paper up right here, slide it over just a little bit. That way right here, slide it over some. I can just pick it up too. Like that right there. It's a little bit shorter brisket, especially for this butcher paper. But like I said, it's what we get our hands on. We have to work with it. So we take it like this. Pull it right here. Now what you want to do, you want to pull it snug. So on this back side, you got a straight line. That's all part of your trimming. When you get ready to cook it and all that stuff. So you have a straight line better so nothing can leak out. This is the flat side. Take my finger, fold it like this. Get that butcher paper light here. I hold this down. I'm not applying no heavy pressure on it. And take this point where the, the point is at. Fold over a little bit. This can be very confusing. There's tons of ways to wrap brisk, because I've seen them multiple ways, but this works for us. And I pick guys, and then we take it like this. We snug it up, pull it back to you. Anything that's kind of sticking out, you can tuck it in right here. And what I like to do right here is tear this part right here off. 
And I haven't had to tear too much paper, so you want to be mindful of that. Then I fold this part down. I've learned when I do it like this, it kind of helps that bottom cook even. And I just fold it up like that. Make sure it's good and tight like a nice old package, a good brisket. And I put it back on the smoker. I want to kind of cover that whole bottom equally, so that's a little bit better right here, but look at that. Now, it's, now the whole time it cooked, the point was going towards the firebox. Well, now I'm gonna turn around with a flat towards the firebox, because typically on my Mobird, which is a great smoker, the flat will cook a little bit behind the point, and I think most of that, not really the smoker, it's all the fat and the marble that's in the point because it has more marble, that's why they call it the fatty, and this is the lean. So I'm gonna turn it around that way with the flat be towards the firebox. And like we'll check it, like I usually like check it in the hour, you'll start seeing that fat go through that paper, so you can start seeing it through. Now sometimes the whole paper can be completely um, saturated with the fat, sometimes just half of it, but we go by feel. But right now it's real stiff, even though you saw a jiggle a while ago. And when we start checking, like I check in the hour, I check the size and start seeing it break down and get soft. And then I'll show you a little trick I do to start gauging it. And I will probe it, but probing is not the all be, be all, it's always feel. Because smaller briskets cook a whole lot faster than bigger briskets, so we have like a temperature gauge we go by. But that thing's wrapped real tight. You don't see no nothing leaking out. Nothing that we're gonna put it back on the smoker. All right, I just put it on the smoker. This is the point. Remember, this was in the towards the firebox in the the whole cook to now. This is the flat. When I wrapped it, I did a 180 with the flat going towards the firebox. This is the point right here. Now, if you cook it on a pellet, an egg, or something like that, or even like an electric smoker or a gas smoker, you can tell what side cooking faster than other. Not you can probe it. If if the point and the flat are 10 or more degrees apart so the point is 10 degrees higher more than 10 degrees higher than the flat then i would change i do a 180 now they're cooking evenly i wrap and put it back on there but typically the flat when i cook them this way when i get ready to wrap it that flat is usually 15 to 20 degrees slower or lower than this point so that's why you turn it around so it can cook even so point flat flat towards the firebox. We let that sit, we're checking in about an hour. It should take about two hours, two and a half hours the most, but mainly you want it to be like the last third of the cook or less. You don't want that paper a very long time because if it is, it'll start steaming and that steam that bark off. You'll take that paper off and be like, what happened to my bark? It'll steam it off. Still tastes good, but it won't look as good. Hey guys, we've been cooking this brisket for 12 hours. We just pulled it off. I want you to see how it looks and stuff like that. The biggest, the best thing about a brisket is that the longer you let it rest, the better off it is. Usually when we pull it off, it's hovering around 200 to 205. Um, we want to let it come down to about 160 to 150 and then put it in the warmer. It's something about when you hold it overnight, or at least for about three to four hours, it just something hap magical happens to it. It breaks down those fibers, and I think Thing that's just like the awesome in, in it but right here we got one right here you saw how that paper was when we first put it on the smoker when we checked it look how it's not saturated with fat now sometimes it won't be completely saturated like this sometimes it'd be half of it but it still don't mean if it's done or not so you still have to feel it you see how super soft that is to touch that right that's the last part the last part to get soft right in there. I like that right there. And typically I don't do this, but I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna unwrap and let you look at it. Man, this thing smells so, so good. And another thing about it, as you cook this brisket and you check it, you have to keep pulling it tight to make sure that it's real snug too. If not, you'll lose a lot of your, um, like I call it liquid gold, or that ajou go down the drain. So you take this right here. You want to be careful, you don't want to rip that bark off. But I'm still going to eat it, so it don't matter. <laughs> but I don't want to. And like I said, it needs to definitely rest longer before we actually cut it, but I want you to see it. That's what I want you to see that right there. That jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. We lost a little bit of bark right there. It happens. But that's what I want you to see right there. Oh man, look how I pick it up. Oh, you see that? Do you see that? 
Look at all that liquid gold in there, but I'm gonna put it back in there so it can reabsorb that in there. Oh man, but I just want you to see that. That's the brisket that we cooked today. It took, I said it took about 12 hours total. We let it rest. I went cut, if I had to cut in it today or right this moment for guests and friends and family, I would at least wait. I would at least try to wait 45 minutes to an hour. I let it sit on the counter, at least try to come down to an internal temperature. I would say as low as I can, but if you got people sitting around salivating in the mouth, you probably get down to about 180, 170. But the longer you let it set. Now, when you're cutting it, only cut what people are going to eat. And probably in this case, they're probably going to tear this joker up because you don't want to start oxidizing. It gets dark color and it dries out. Only cut what you're going to eat and the rest of it, you can put it back in. You can let put it in the refrigerator and eat it later. And reheat is very easy for it, too. So like I said, snug it back up. Put it back down and let it finish resting on this paper right here. All that juice you saw in the bottom, I re it, it'll soak it back up as it rests. And man, be something beautiful.